On a good day, my father was extremely intelligent. I remember going to the bookshelf and pulling out the dictionary and just thumbing through the pages, trying to find a word with the biggest, longest definition. And when I found it, I'd ask him if he knew what the word meant. And almost every single time he knew what it meant. And he could also tell me the page that it was on in that dictionary. That's called a photographic memory. And he was very, very smart. On a good day, he was also very funny. He had a sense of humor unlike anybody else that I knew. It wasn't that simple, lowbrow, knock-knock, who's there kind of humor. It was very perceptive, very astute, and almost had a bit of a delayed reaction. So when it finally hit you, you just doubled over with laughter because it was so intelligent and so funny. And on a good day, he was kind. I remember in elementary school, I had done one of those fundraisers where I was selling chocolate bars and I lost all the money for that. I probably ate half of those chocolate bars and then spent the rest of the money. I don't remember what happened, but I lost the money. I didn't have it. And my school was telling me I couldn't graduate to the next level unless I paid this bill. And we were poor. And I was extremely nervous about going to him, my father, and asking him for this money. I thought he would get mad. I still remember to this day telling him what happened and him just reaching into his pocket, pulling out his wallet, putting down three crisp 20s and saying, no problem, I got it this week, here you go, take care of it. And he never brought it up again. To this day, I recall that as one of the kindest things he ever did for me. But on a bad day, he was a lot of things. One of the things that he was was lazy. He didn't like to work. He didn't like to work for the man. Didn't like anybody telling him what to do. He liked it when I worked. Oh, for sure. He loved it when my brother worked. He loved it when my mom worked because she brought home a paycheck that helped the family. But him, not so much. He liked doing what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it, which was usually never working. On a bad day, he was also drunk. And not just one drink over the limit drunk. We're talking about an entire jug of wine, the kind with the handles. He'd polish that off and move on to the next one, usually polish that off too, sometimes move on to the vodka from there, or the cocaine and marijuana, whatever happened to be available. Yes, on a bad day, he was drunk. And on a really, really bad day, he was violent. People who've suffered abuse do this funny thing with violence, I've noticed. They differentiate between the levels of violence. So oh, this is a good violence. It only involved a slap or a hit, and this is a bad violence. It was terrible, terrible, terrible beating, very cruel, and so on and so forth. We do this in our mind in order to cope on some level. My father wasn't in the good violence. He was all the way up in that bad violence. His violence was the kind of unspeakable violence that you never want to see, you never want to even hear about. This devastating, destructive, despicable violence. He never took it out on me. He never beat me, but he did beat my mother. And sometimes he took it out on my brother. And when asked to recount what it is that I witnessed as a child, I begin to stutter because on a cellular level, there's still residual fragmentation. There's parts of me really that are still stuck in my timeline, my childhood timeline that I had to leave there because I had to check out, man. I had to go somewhere else in order to cope, in order to be able to stay alive. Yes, on a bad day, he was very violent. And unfortunately for him and also for me, my father had a lot of bad days. I spent a lot of years of my life really mad about this. I looked back at his childhood and I looked at the privilege from which he came. He was born to wealthy people in the state of Hawaii. He was born on Molokai in 1942 and my grandfather was one of the first Republican legislators ever in the state of Hawaii, notoriously a Democrat state. My grandfather was a man of means. My grandfather ran businesses. There was always money. There was always education. And my father had access to all of this. And yet, despite that, it seems like he decided to seek out every single bad day that he could ever have. And not just for himself. Of course not. He sought it out to visit it upon others as well, to visit it upon me. 
I've spent a lot of my life juxtaposing how he turned out with how I turned out. How is it, I've often asked, that I managed to be a productive member of society? How is it that I've managed to be a good person, somebody who has morals and who wants to be a blessing in this world? I don't have a ton of goals for myself. I've got some business goals, professional goals. But one of the goals that I have for my life is to reach and help and encourage and bless as many people as possible before the clock strikes midnight and I have to take that big pumpkin carriage to heaven. Like, I want to do as much with my life as I possibly can before I die. I don't know when that is, but that's my goal. I have a heart for people. I want to treat people right. I want to help and encourage them. How did I, coming out of what I came out of, end up with these types of sensibilities and this type of life, whereas he, a man who had it all, ended up squandering it so shamefully. Yes, I've spent a lot of years angry about that. I spent a lot of years reacting to that. Each success that I would have was always hooked into the things he couldn't achieve for himself. I did things in spite of the man that he was, but I was always hooked into the man that he was. And then about, I don't know, 10 years ago, something happened. I unhooked from this person who is so iconic in my life. I stopped focusing so much on all of the things he should have done, the manner in which he squandered his life, all of the things that he got wrong, and instead, I started facing forward. I started thinking about my own life and I started looking at myself like, what are my talents? What are my abilities? What can I say to people that might help people? How can I be successful? How can I thrive? And as soon as I started moving in that direction, this man and all he did got fainter and fainter energetically within my life. I couldn't tell you what actually happened those 10 years ago. I don't know. It's not like I had a breakthrough moment in therapy and said, aha, I no longer have to be angry. I don't know. I think all I did was turn away from it and face in a different direction. All I did was follow the energy of what was possible for me in my life and embrace that, not despite somebody or in spite of somebody, but for myself. And now at this age, I'm able to look back at the man that he was and his ceaseless string of bad days and be very grateful for it. Very grateful. We've all heard people, haven't we, say, oh yeah, that was really hard, but I'm grateful because it taught me something. We've heard that and I hope they mean it, but a lot of times I don't think they necessarily know what they're saying. But I'm saying that I'm legitimately grateful for that man. As you know, I'm a spiritual person. I'm a metaphysical person. I'm a teacher. I'm very woo-woo. And I believe that we all came into this life with a blueprint, with a map, if you will. And this blueprint is leading us in the direction of our purpose and our work and what we came here to do. I also believe that each and every one of us had a hand in selecting the folks that we were going to be associating with in this life, and in particular, the family into which we would be born. As this idea had begun to dawn on me years ago, I would ask myself, well, why? Why would I pick this guy? He's crazy. He's crazy. He's violent. Why would I have picked him? But now, no longer a victim of the charge of that situation and that past, I can see why. It's in the contrast that his life makes sense to me. Every wrong road that my father walked down set me up to choose the right roads for myself. Every bad decision, and he made a lot, that my dad made equipped me. It taught me how to figure out how to make good decisions for myself. And every person my father hurt or damaged with that dragon tail of his just whipping around causing devastation to the people that loved him the most has taught me how to truly love not just people in general but my people 
the people who love me and are there for me. Everything my father was taught me, modeled for me in the opposite many times, but modeled for me the woman that I was being called to be. And so, yes, I can say with 100% honesty, I am so grateful for that man. I am so grateful for the person that I've become and all that waits for me still. And if I think I'm doing well, wow, I can't even begin to articulate how beautiful my brother is doing. My brother is named Jesse and he is the best man that I've ever known besides my husband. But I mean, even my husband will tell you, there's something about Jesse. How did he come out so wonderful? The best father, the best husband. He feeds all the kids on his street. He just loves people. How? Because we came out of devastation. We came out of a situation that provided contrast and gave us the information that we needed energetically and intelligently to create a life where we, Jesse and I, could design and create for ourselves our own very good day. I want to encourage everybody out there to start now reframing that which has wounded us and that which has damaged us. We all have our stories and they're important, but insofar as you can, wherever you are now, begin to pivot a little bit. Begin to face forward in the direction of why you're really here. You're not here to react for the rest of your life to the fucked up things that happened to you. Pardon my French. I'm a spiritual person who cusses from time to time. But that's not why you're here. You're not here to run an endless loop on a track of devastation based on something that somebody did to you when you were a child or in your first marriage or in your friendships. That's not why you're here. You're here to face forward and move in the direction of your dreams. You only have one life. You want to impact powerfully, persuasively, as many people as you possibly can. And don't forget, it's these past pains, these past abuses that have provided you with the vocabulary that you need to talk to other people who are still in their own abuse. They're still in their own heart of darkness. It's because of what we came out of that we can recognize them in a crowd. It's because of what was done to us that we can show them how to heal themselves. These things that have happened to us could be construed or viewed as a great gift. That's up to you. That's how I view it. And I don't purport to tell you how to process your stuff. I get it. It's a big deal and we all do it in our own way. But I am having my own string of very good days. And I just want you to know that that's what I want for you as well. Blessings. Hey everybody, I just wanted to end by inviting you to my free online spiritual community called The Lightworkers Lab. If you're interested in finding your spiritual tribe, go to thelightworkerslab.com. Check us out, learn what we're about, and learn how you can join. Or just go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab and ask to join. I also wanted to mention that every couple of months I offer an in-depth or a comprehensive spiritual or metaphysical class. And if you're interested in taking your spirituality and your connection to a whole new level, go Go to crystallinecompton.com slash spiritual hyphen classes. Check out what's coming up and join if you are so inclined. And to everybody, I just want to say that I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. God bless.